As a defensive coach, you always want to try to find areas to nitpick, but you, you pitch a shutout, so what were the areas to nitpick? <laughs> I mean, there's still some execution things that we could uh, we could improve on. I mean, there's a, uh, we're always in search of the perfect game, right? And I don't know if we're ever going to find it, but uh, um, you know, I, I think guys played really hard and, and um, gave themselves a chance to be successful, and they made plays, and it was awesome. Um, so proud of them, fun to watch. We saw Clay Duke with his hand on the ground for a bit for the first time. Is that a sign of things to come, or just that year? Uh, no, I mean that's something that we've always kind of had in the works. Is uh, we can always use him as an extra rusher if we need to. Um, you know, as understanding what we're doing at defensive end. Um, you know, gradually more and more we're trying to earn him more rushes throughout the throughout the course of the year. I think that started to improve once we got into conference play, and you know we want to get him doing what he does best, and that is what he does best for sure. Any update on Daniel Green's status for Saturday? Yeah, he's been practicing a little bit. Yeah, he's going to be day to day uh, game time decision. And then talk a little bit about Nick Allen stepping in for Daniel on Saturday. Awesome. Well. Yeah, Nick was awesome, and and we knew he was going to be. He's just a uh, uh, total control of the game, um, total control of what he's doing. You know, I, I just uh, vocal kid, similar to Deuce in a lot of ways, uh, and um, yeah, I couldn't be uh, happier for him and and uh, how he's you know filled in not only not only. Uh, there, but uh, you know, throughout the duration of the TCU game as well. You guys have obviously played some pretty good receivers in the Big 12, Johnson, Hutchinson. Where does Xavier Worthy kind of Boy, sack up in that? I'd have a hard time uh, getting a draft going with those guys. I mean, that's uh, they're all different. Uh, they're all different, uh, used differently. They're all uh, special in their own ways. Um, you know, Worthy's deal is he's just incredibly fast. You know, just uh, not not nearly as big as the others, but um, you know, tough to get your hands on him in space and and. Um, you know the the route concepts that they do with him are a little different than they would do with some of the others. I think he's got a little bit more uh, uh, in his cachet, so to speak, than than maybe some of the other guys that are are fade ball guys. And um, you know he's he's a he's a special player. Were Saturday snaps impactful reps for Crew Jackson for the future? Yeah, that was cool to get uh, to get him some. Uh, but uh, crew and guys like crew, absolutely. Um, you know Jake Clifton, I thought grew immensely throughout the the week. Um, from the late Wednesday uh, edition of moving him to Mike Backer, um, you know, as a true freshman, to be able to um, know uh, well all three linebacker spots and to make that change in the middle of a week and then to go out there and do what he did was incredible. Um, VJ Payne played 25 snaps as a true freshman. Jacob Parrish played 30 s snaps as a true freshman, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so it was cool to get a lot of those guys, those, those reps. They're all good. Who was an impactful party for uh, the sideline interference? Uh, it, I'll say it was not me. Um, I don't know if I should incriminate uh, anybody else, but uh, it was not me. I, I thought, somebody told me it was me after the game. I said, I promise it wasn't me. I was. I, I obey Coach True and, and his guidelines back there. How big of a problem are Bijan and Roshan? Unbelievable one-two punch, especially when they're in the game together. Um, you know, I think Roshan uh, opened our eyes a year ago with what he did against us. Just uh, as the game wore on, he he wore us down, and uh, obviously didn't get a chance to see Bijan a year ago when we were down there. But um, you know, his tape speaks for itself. But uh, it's just I don't know if there's a better tandem in the country, um, and uh, um, both of them could be you know all Americans anywhere that they played, and and. Uh, um, yeah, th those two present problems. Based on what you saw last year, a lot of Wildcat that hurt you, do you expect to see it again? I would think so at some point uh, in the game. I don't know if they're going to do it as, as uh, in the frequency that they did it last year. I think last year there were 16 snaps in the game of Wildcat, and I think they had um, – and it was a short week, and there were a lot of other you know factors going into that too. But um, I don't know. I, I think that that's definitely something that they're uh, capable of doing. And, and shoot, Roshan even threw two passes, if I recall, uh, in last year's game. And um, so, you know, they've got a lot of offense that they can do out of that stuff. Everyone kind of talks about the importance of the front seven when slowing down that running back tandem. But how important is the secondary when trying to slow yeah, that down? Yeah, with what we do, that's that's what it's going to come down to a lot of times is, is our ability from the third level to come up and, and make those plays. And... Um, you know, and we're certainly part of that run fit. And then in the same respect, you know, being able to handle <clears throat> some of the RPO glances and some of the RPO things that that uh, that they do uh, and that everybody does. And so that's that's the uh, that's going to be the the cat and mouse game a little bit is how we place our our pieces and and how they uh, how they try to attack it. Whenever you 
play a team that's coming off a bye or an idle week, whatever you want to call it, like Texas is. How much do you prepare for you know the unknown stuff you haven't seen yeah. before on film? It's definitely a different deal. As a two, two, I was saying earlier, two things I don't love is I don't love uh, playing teams the first game of the season, and I don't love playing teams coming off of a bye, especially this late in the year. And especially Texas, because I'm sure they've got 150 analysts in their offices that are, uh, um, you know, able to, to sort through a bunch of things. But, um, but I think that, uh, you know, um, the, the good and bad of that is, uh, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when we come off a buy, sometimes I, I thought when we had our buy, I thought we were in a really good rhythm, and then that we had that buy that probably wasn't the opportune time um, for it, and uh, not that we came back. Uh, any worse, but it, it, you know, sometimes it slows that rhythm down too uh, temporarily. So um, it is what it is. I mean, everybody gets a, an opportunity to, uh, to get a week uh, throughout the course of the year. It just so happens that it, uh, as long as it doesn't happen every week, it's inevitable that it's going to happen sometime. To assume you probably don't have many complaints with Echo and they got flagged there for defensive passing. Oh, I, I don't know how you could have played that any better. Um, you know, when you're totally turned around and got somebody closed off and you got your hands up in the air ready to catch the ball and uh, and you get pulled to the ground and they call you for the flag, um, you know, I, I take a little issue with that. But uh, I was really happy with the technique that the corners played with the ball down the field. We didn't come down with any of them. But, uh, you know, they, they did what we thought they would do. They were going to take five or six shots throughout the course of the game. And um, it was very important that we stayed on top of those, and, and we did. And, um, you know, that was, that was a big difference. I mean, that's how they've beaten people, Oklahoma State, is those chunk fade ball passes, and, and uh, we just didn't allow them. Does Texas offensive line pulls? in any way resemble what K-State does and what you see in practice? Uh, the, the physicality level of it is, uh, is, is probably higher than what we've seen here. Um, uh, you know, I mean, there's some pretty good old lines in the league, but I, I, would, I would put them right up there. I mean, some of those uh, young kids that they have are, are going to be tremendous, tremendous football players. But, uh, yeah, I think that philosophically they want to knock you off the ball. I mean, they're not a, a you know, waddle and gather type operation similar to us. I think that's what we want, too, is we want to get movement at the point of attack and we want to get, uh, uh, get that back started downhill and, and uh, then make the cuts from there. And I think that, that's the same type of philosophy that they have. Um, you know, schematically different, but uh, philosophically similar. Ewers is obviously incredibly talented. And for a redshirt freshman, aside from his arm talent, what really sticks out to you on film about him? Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate that he, he, you know, missed. I would like to have a better gauge on that, uh, you know, missing the, that time. But yeah, that that's that's just it. His arm talent is incredible, and I think, uh, um, you know, with that extra time of the bye week, I think that that uh, will help him maybe to see pictures a little bit cleaner. So we've got to good, do a good job of uh, mixing our things up. Anything special to simulate uh, tackling Bijan Robinson in practice this uh, week? No, uh, I, 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 w I wish I had a great uh, thing for you there, but I, I don't. I, we we just uh, we we tackle, uh, we thud um, in practice, and and we do it um, we do it probably as as violently and as often as anybody in the country. And so um, you know, I think we're ready for that. Um, you know, can you simulate that? I don't know if you can simulate that with a with a freshman uh, tailback coming downhill. But um, no, I mean it's it's that's the game. I mean we're gonna have to we're we're gonna be ready to to take him on physically.